Um, for everybody who has already joined, I see 27 participants. Um, we have already been warming up here and already had a little fun. That's right. So um, welcome to this panel discussion on package managers. So uh, welcome and thank you for joining. And especially thanks to all of you on the board who have been willing to, uh, to, to participate and to, uh, to join us for, yeah, let's say some, an hour of exciting discussions about package management. So um, I would suggest uh, just everybody on the call, so all the, uh, all the panelists, just to have a, a brief introduction, who they are and what they're doing. And Chris, you get last because you're the most excited. Yep, <laughs> I'll go last for sure. <laughs> Okay, who wants to, who, but Chris wants to start. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I, I volunteer, uh, Scott, why don't you, why don't you kick us off? Sure, my name is Scott Richardson, been working for National Instruments for about 27 years. I uh, have worked with many different products, test and, um, but right now I'm primarily uh, focused on package management. So I'm the engineering manager and I'm currently the interim product owner for, um, the workflow that needs to be worked on for the squad. Oh, thanks. So now I just I just assign a random, a random order. Kane, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> yep, so I'm Kane Johnson. I work for uh, More Good Ideas. We support uh, G Package Manager. Not very hard right now because uh, <laughs> a lot of things up in the air, but I've been working for MGI for about five years, and I was working uh, LabVIEW stuff for five years previous to that. So, been around for a little bit. Okay, thanks. So, and I was very rude to not let the lady go first. Nikki, <laughs> would you please? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Nikki Budgel. Um, I am the product manager um, at NI, or National Instruments, for package management. Um, prior, prior to that, I was also looking at licensing, and so I kind of do to both of those products. Um, as product management. Okay, thanks. Um, so Adam, right, let's keep yep. going like that. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm Adam Brown. I'm, uh, I work for Abaco Systems as the lead of the test uh, automation software team. So uh, we have an internal test framework based on LabVIEW and test stand that we maintain and develop. Um, and part of that includes packaging it up and, and deploying it to all the test stations uh, in the business. So um, uh, that's, yep. Yeah, I was invited by Ollie here. So thanks. Okay. Wes? Hey, um, I'm Wes Winland. I've worked for National Instruments for about 23 years. Um, currently in software R&D, um, the tech lead of the NI Package Manager. And before that, I've worked on uh, previous installer technologies and parts of LabVIEW Installer Builder as well. So great to talk to you all today. So um, yes, Chris? Would you give him, would you do us the honor? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep this brief. Uh, so my name is Chris Chileno. Uh, I'm a LabVIEW champion, certified LabVIEW architect. Uh, I'm wearing two hats right now. Uh, so I work at DMC, which is a consultant uh, firm based out of Chicago. And I'm also the founder and president of G Central, which is the LabVIEW community's, I believe, first and only nonprofit organization designed to remove barriers to contribution with a real focus on package management. So I am crazy thrilled to be a part of this panel. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, and Jim did last the, the last minute ex, uh, entry. So um, would you just go on in, in, uh, with the introduction, Jim, please? Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to see you all. So I'm uh, Jim Crane. Um, let's see, how did I get here? Uh, about 20 something years ago, uh, I worked with uh, others to create an open source community for LabVIEW. Uh, and together we worked on a package manager. And uh, a few of us got together and decided to actually put some real energy behind it. And that became VI Package Manager. And so we just had our 19th birthday for VIPM. Uh, and yeah, pretty cool. And we've come a long way. About 10 years ago, we uh, worked with National Instruments to ship that with LabVIEW. 
as the official package manager for LabVIEW code reuse. Uh, we're still working hard with NI to map out the next 10 years of package management in LabVIEW. And let's see, uh, I'm gonna be presenting a couple more times today uh, next on Dragon, which is uh, enabling per project package installation, uh, in including installing uh, LabVIEW and other tools um, and kind of can bootstrap your LabVIEW projects in just a single click. So um, yeah, happy, happy to contribute here. Okay, thanks for the introduction, uh, everybody. So, um, so I think it's on me to say some words about myself. So I, I'm the I'm the guy without the camera because if I turn on the camera, you get that jump scare. Um, so, so so basically, my webcam is just frozen, and I was not, um, you know, I think yeah. Um, I'm based in Germany, so uh, excuse me if there are some strange uh, sentences, constructions, if I'm out of words or something like that. So we'll just uh, just try to do the best. So um, I'm happy I can moderate this panel and I'm happy that all of you are here. So um, let's go on with some questions that I have prepared. And maybe, so um, by the way, the audience, please feel free to, uh, to post on the chat. And uh, if you have direct question, we can try to make you a moderator. So saying that, David Thompson, you've just you've just uh, raised the flag. Is there just just post on, on the um, uh, just just see, David? David, is there something you wanted to mention, or was that just by accident, David? Sorry. Okay, so. Next. Okay, so starting. So um, Jim has just mentioned that the VI package manager has been um, part of the, the LabVIEW installation for quite a long time. Um, honestly speaking, um, the time when uh, the VIPM got part of the LabVIEW distribution, that was for me personally, the, so the, the really the first time I got in touch with something like a package manager, especially um, with LabVIEW. Um, so, um, and in the end, still today, um, a lot of people are still um, yeah, distributing and, and, and creating the software without the use of Pa uh, of, of a package manager. So, um, uh, although there's definite benefit on it, now we have the, the this uh, situation that uh, we have VIPM, we have the NIPM, we have the G package manager from MGI, and um, and for example, Adam, that's why he's on the panel uh, at Abaco, they're using a, a package management system that is uh, that uh, originates from outside the lab view uh, and the test and uh, environment. So from the out, outside the NI ecosystem. So, um, so we're going from, let's say, zero to 300 uh, p uh, miles per hour. So um, what do you think, what is the reason behind that? Who wants to take the question? Ooh. What was the question? The reason behind so, what? Is it, so uh, why, why we just had that top dog like VRPM for all the time uh, for for a very very long time, and now it seems like okay, that's my subjective view. Yeah, it seems like um, all of those different package managed solutions kind kind of pop up right now. So mm -hmm. from within the community uh, or from within the ecosystem, and from uh, from um, from outside the ecosystem. I suspect that part of the reason why we have three different package managers is a combination of um, business, technology, and need as they've evolved over time. Uh, my first introduction to package manager was a beautiful one through VI Package Manager. It has, I, I've got nothing but good things to say about it. It's incredible. It's made my life easy as a distributor and my life easy as a consumer of code. And I could talk about a bunch of different features. So thumbs up, and then uh, things started evolving. We needed to have better distribution for drivers. We needed to have better distribution for the NI platform. And so NI came up with its package manager, cool. And then there was more development and evolution for us as developers, where we needed to have um, 
sandboxes for our projects. And so G Package Manager came on the scene. So I think that the reason why we have three package managers, it's again, it's a culmination of business need, evolving technological need, and evolving need of our community. So that's my take on it. Yeah, I mean, I can offer sort of the perspective for some someone who sort of uh, we settled on an outside package manager, although I will say we still use VIPM as well for our internal development code. Um, so we use that for toolkits and internally developed code that us as developers used to develop our software. But um, really what we were lacking when we were looking for, and this was a few years ago, so the, the landscape was was different back then in, in terms of uh, lab view package managers. Um, but we were looking for something that could be used for deployment as well. So um, we build all of our code into pack project libraries and, and sort of, you know, make sure it's all deployment ready for going on on systems. Um, and there wasn't really anything that could do that, uh, do dependency management with drivers for NI software as well. So uh, we could wrap up the drivers into packages, build a whole dependency chain and have a nice easy rollout of software. And that's that's what we, you know, was lacking. And that's why we, we went with sort of a, a different solution. Yeah, something else I'll throw out there as well is that we're talking about these different package managers. Just to kind of clarify that, you know, there are, there are several different types of package managers. A two, there's like a, you know, language package manager is one type and a system package manager. VIPM and GPM are more tend for language specific package managers targeted for LabVIEW. Whereas NI package manager, one of its initial goals was to be a system level package manager to manage drivers and applications for the entire system. But now as both have matured, there's uh, there's overlap and there's some challenges, right? Because a typical developer may need both sets of functionality. They want their application, their code and drivers. So I think there's definitely some, mm -hmm. some challenges there and some room for, for innovation integration. So. Yeah, well, I have, some, I have some thoughts too. So, you know, and I started on NXG probably about 10 plus years ago. And I think, I think one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot of stuff come online now is that because NI has officially, uh, you know, handed the NXG effort and is putting all the focus back on current generation lab years, I think there's a lot of interest now from other folks who've used like Python, other package management systems mm. to bring those things in to lab you. And I know even from JKI's perspective and my perspective, it's incredible. it was incredibly hard, especially over the past five, six years, to do any kind of substantial investment in current gen lab view. And nobody was really doing a whole lot of investment into NXG. And the companies that did do a lot of investment in it, into NXG, you know, probably are disappointed now. Mm -hmm. So I think that right now we're seeing like a revitalization where everybody's extremely interested in now getting back to current gen lab view and looking seriously at like, okay, what are all the different use cases and problems and how can we fix them? And everybody's interested in investing and solving those problems. Okay, speak, speaking of use cases, I think that's that, that's a pretty good point. So, and also what, what Wes said that there's, we have this kind of system level package management and this language specific package management um, that goes along with a question um, that that Erich Schlieper posted on the um, on, on the chat. I'd be interested to hear how about NIPM and VIPM are either complementary or separate from each other. So I think that was the, the, the first distinction that we had there. Um, and Q asked, well, um, along that question, how are the package managers working together for dependencies between package types? So um, yeah. with that. I think well, what I would say is NI packages, typically speaking, are, are system level packages. Uh, so things that you would install with NIPM would go essentially into the system, whereas VIPM would be installed into LabVIEW typically, although they do have system packages. Um, we are current, one of the one of the reasons why we put out Dragon is because we wanted to solve some of those challenges. So for example, if your project depends on LabVIEW or DACMX or even the MGI Solution Explorer, 
you can basically pull the Git repository, you can clone it, and then just, you know, type drag and install from a command prompt. And it'll tell you, you need LabVIEW, you need MGI Solution Explorer, you need VIPM. It'll download and install all those things and then configure your project so you can just get started. Yeah, and so I love that. I think that as a developer, my goal is to write code. Um, I, I don't want to have to care. Uh, I don't want to have to care about the dependencies, the correct uh, things to download. I, I, I want to get coding. And so anything mm -hmm. that gets me there with minimal effort so I can take my brain power and put it into the code, I'm for that. Now, specifically to the question, are the package managers working together for dependencies between the package types as of today for all current releases of all software? The answer is no. There is no inter-package manager dependency without additional effort from the developers. Yeah, yeah, that is that is a challenge when you use more than one that we we have as well. Um, uh, I've realized I haven't even mentioned which package manager I'm using, but uh, we're using is, is chocolatey for Windows. Um, and uh, there's no, as you said, there's no interdependency or there's no way to link uh, BI packages with uh, chocolatey packages and, and that sort of thing. So that's always a challenge and you end up having to have to either, if you're giving it to a user to install manually, you have separate instructions and they've got to do the two package managers or or you have, if you've got a tool, you've got to write those in separately. So it's, yeah, it is it is a it is one of those hurdles. Right. And there's, yeah. there's cost on two fronts at that stage. I, as the developer, have to create and maintain setup instructions or a program. Yep. And as the developer, I have to follow those instructions to the T. And if you don't, things are going to behave oddly, which you have to then debug inside your code. And that keeps yeah. me from writing code. OK, but still um, having having this, this distinction between system and between language and having, let's say, two, two, two different uh, package managers that have their special, specialities and their strengths, uh, couldn't it be also beneficial to have two separate package managers, one for language and one for system? Yeah, I think so. I think those things solve different problems. You know, it's nice to have some heterogeneous thing, but do we want the development package manager to also be the deployment package manager? I mean, maybe. That sounds nice. I don't know if it's realistic. And it doesn't really bother me if I know I'm in development mode, I use this package manager. And then when I'm actually deploying something, I'm going to use this one that does it better sure. than the dev one, you know? Hmm. So I guess my greatest take on that, uh, my hope is to grow the LabVIEW community. I think it's a fantastic language and I want to see all of us come up with really cool code and share it with each other. So imagine I'm in 10th grade and I just got through writing something that I'm proud of and I'd like to share with the community. I don't care about a package manager. I don't care about system. I don't care about, I don't care. Give me something that lets me publish. And if I want to, if I'm an 11th grader that wants to use that 10th, 10th graders work, I don't care. So in other words, those ideas of system versus reuse code should only be imposed as they are, as they're necessary. But I, I, I hate that we even have that necessity. I'd, I'd maybe differ a little bit. I think I think people do need to care about dependencies. I don't think they need to. And so it's. I think it's a little bit less about mental effort, and it's a little bit more about like elbow grease. The uh, the the reason why we created VIPM initially was because we were distributing folders and we were zipping them and we were moving them around, and they had dependencies, and we cared about them. But the question was, how do we how do we capture the information about what we care about, right? And so if we can specify that in one location. We can manage it. You know, there there are great presentations uh, by you know John McBee on component management and all these issues that are related to effective software engineering. So we definitely care about that and need to put the brain energy into doing that. Uh, the tooling is really what automates the whole process and then also it gives it some rails too so you can make good decisions hmm. yeah i think dependency management comes in uh, it's very it's, it's essential for the deployment or the system package manager because for a deployment or for a user they just want to 
to install it and it should bring along with it all the things to make it work and 100%. they shouldn't have to think about any more than that obviously for a developer that's slightly different because a developer might know i need this version of this thing and this um, but even so dependency management can still be useful there i think but, but for systems stuff you, you need to have the tree but uh, uh, from our experiences um some of the dependency chains and the links between packages sometimes are take the most effort out of the whole packaging thing because well you need said. to make sure all of it is correct because one wrong thing and also it requires quite a lot of discipline in versioning so your well team said. has to be all on the same page of what what is a software version uh, for us we follow semantic versioning um, but there needs to be some clear structure of what's a major version what's a minor version what's going to break and what's not because <laughs> if you don't do that everything breaks and then <laughs> in a production environment um you've got users are wondering why have i installed this update and it's broken everything and that's the worst situation that you don't want to be in so mm -hmm. yeah sure i think i think um the the, the package manager is uh is, i'll say a very useful tool but it's yet another tool so um mm. if you don't have put any brain power into the dependencies and now which module needs to talk with that to have undefined apis and stuff like that the that your, your pack, package manager um, is probably quite lost. So it, it's a nice tool then, but you, you, you're giving it a very hard time, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something that requires effort. It's not a, a quick fix solution. It's it's something that sure. solves solves a lot of problems, but it needs effort to actually implement, implement correctly. Yeah. Complex, no, complexity beyond necessity is what I, I love stamping out. This is a complex problem, but mm -hmm. are, is the tooling complex beyond necessity? I feel like today the answer is yes. I don't think we can eradicate uh, complexity for all the good points that Jim brought up as well as Adam. So it's never going to be brainless, but can it be, can we, can we focus our creativity on code consumption so I get my job done quicker? and code creation so that it can give things away. That's where I want my yeah. energy to go. Yeah. Well, I'll say too, like there, there is a lot of complexity under the hood. Um, oh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, in terms of what the package manager does and in terms of palette creation and so installing good. things and synchronization, so and then what we've done with uh, DIPM 2021 and Dragon, where you can put everything under the project folder working with the pallets and stuff and plugging into LabVIEW is something that has a lot of historical legacy with it. Mm -hmm. And some of the artificial complexity that Chris is referring to is because of design decisions that National Instruments made 30 years ago. And, you know, this is back from a time when there was <laughs> no internet connection and source code control was folks at NI passing a poll around, which was, That's right. <laughs> was the mutex on source code. That's right. And so, and so the oh, idea, cool. of, yeah, the idea of keeping packages inside your project and pulling them down from the network uh, was uh, not a thing. So right now, where you know National Instruments, you know, have, you know, with NXG, have a lot of great plans. Um, and so what we're doing now that we can focus on current gen again, uh, JKI is working really closely with National Instruments to design a more holistic solution to some of these problems. And so we'll be seeing NI Package Manager getting better, VIPM getting a lot better, the Dragon is gonna be doing a lot there too. Uh, so you can expect a lot better uh, like project, LabVIEW project integration with VIPM and a lot better interoperability between NIPM and VIPM and Dragon. Yes, speaking speaking of project organization and, and componentization, um, I think two weeks ago, something like that, we had a, uh, here in Germany, we had a, at the Würzburg user group, we had a short meeting and we were already discussion, uh, discussing about that. And your compliment uh, pointed out that uh, they, they are really doing everything, uh, all the dependencies are on project base. So not not the old style, let's say they, 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 that's what we've inherited, what uh, Jim just mentioned. So you go into the instrument lib, you go to the VI lib and stuff like that, and you have the, the whole distribu distributed dependencies, but to have everything within in the project or almost everything within the boat project just like uh, dragon is is doing right now so i think that's also a, a fundamental change or, or say change 
Mm-hmm. People always have tried to do it like that, especially I think w- when they're coming from the outs- outside from the lab world, they might not understand what we are doing here. Yeah? So um, I think having a, a, let's say, having a project, uh, a, a close project also makes it very much easier for the deployment, not, not only for the dependency management within the, the project, but also for the deployment. Because um, I'm usually, when, when I'm teaching a testing course, um, just just a, a brief, like I said, when, when I'm teaching a, a testing course and on the la- last topic on the last day is deployment. <laughs> and um, that should be on the yes. first day. <laughs> now you scare them off. You, scare, you, you totally scare them off because that's that's usually the example that uh, works w- works the least and takes the longest, especially right now on the VMs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, the deployment really turns out everything uh, the the participants have done wrong within uh, within their exercises, and if they have misplaced files or n- not within the project, so everything c- comes up there. So. Um, it's 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 crucial to have a proper organized project organization. Uh, it's just like uh, bi- otherwise, it's building on sand. Yep. So I want to give M- MGI some props here. My my hats off to them for MGI's um, G Package Manager. Where if memory serves, G Package Manager was the first package manager to pioneer this project based um, uh, packaging, which is super yep. awesome. So mm-hmm. I, I agree. I think this is a fantastic route for the package managers to be going, and I'm super thrilled uh, that the package managers are evolving this way. Mm-hmm. But I'll let you your point. You're right. The way in which you organize your files, um, if you do it wrong, you're not uh, you're not going to find out until it's time to distribute and then actually use the code, and it's such a hard problem to solve. It's tough. It's hard. It is, yeah. So I, I need to check the uh, check the chat. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think all that stuff kind of comes down to the tooling. You know, there's been a lot of agreement that per project packages, especially when you're developing, just makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. You can hand that project around a lot easier than handing around like a whole VM with the right version of LabVIEW and the right version of stuff installed into that IDE. That's right. You know. Um, GPM does it pretty well. It's open source. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of like, let's do this support right now, right? Because there's been a lot of changes and you know, we've got Dragon coming up. So if GPM just happens to be the irritant that gets a more supported package manager going, that's great, right? You know? Uh, so if that's that's yeah. the direction, that's great. I think that's the right way. You know, that that's a good point. I would say too that um, you know VIPM is a commercial product, and there's a lot of work that goes into that, and that's installed on every LabVIEW version. And now with the LabVIEW Community Edition around the world, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of installations of it, and so it, it is it is challenging for sure to have a business around a, a package manager. And especially over the past, let's say five, five, six, seven years, uh, it's been hard to invest in that. And so, you know, solutions have come come along, like uh, you know, MGI's package manager, and the G package manager, and yeah, I mean, that is a, is a bit of a kind of a kick in the butt. And uh, I don't think I don't think many of us really were interested in putting that much energy into current gen tooling uh, over the past five years. And now that things are shifting, I think we're gonna see a whole lot more. The other thing too, I was gonna mention, uh, Python has you know really good package management scheme. Mm. And in particular, the, uh, the virtual environment scheme is an idea that's, that's really powerful. And one of the things that's cool about that is that uh, packages that get installed under your project aren't actually like in in your project, so to speak. They're in a folder that's ignored by source code control. You typically don't want to keep a virtual environment um, in source code control, but you do want to have an environment for every single project and you want to be able to construct that environment from an automated fashion. For example, you know, if you kick off an automated build process, actually what happens on the build server is it dynamically constructs 
a virtual environment mm -hmm. for the project that's checked out on the server. It installs all the required packages into that virtual environment on the server for that specific platform, and then it does the build. Love but those files, only the configuration files and the list of dependencies and packages are actually what's in source code control. Yep. Yeah. And I love that because it lends itself to reproducibility and traceability, which are critical in software development. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and with that, if you have some kind of manifest file that has versioning on it, you don't have to worry about, oh, I pulled up my environment and then I grabbed the wrong package and now it's broken. Right. Now I go back to get that other package. All that stuff gets shored up a little bit. And like you said, reproducibility is huge. You know, you want to be able to make build the oh. same code that the other guy did five years ago. You need that kind of stuff. Oh, there's so many advantages. In addition to what you just said, Kane, I mean, let's imagine that I started off a project, but now I'd like to involve Jim on my project. Mm -hmm. And he's like, great, how do Absolutely. I get started? Here's your manifest. This gets your environment set up. And now Jim can get to coding quickly. Yeah. It's great because it's reproducible. Love it. Yeah, one of the big goals was just not spending a day and a half getting my environment set up, you know, from either the project that's happening right next to me that I'm trying to help out on now, the one happened five years ago, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. such a pain. That's right? what we want to eliminate, at least from the dev side, you know? Absolutely. Okay, sp yeah. sp speaking of dependencies and manifests, is, is, sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry. No, I was just I was just going to say one of the approaches we, we take uh, Labico is um, we have meta packages, of, which is just a list of dependencies at specific versions. And we use that for specific environments, as you said. So you can just say, install this package, and it will right. bring in all the other packages to mm -hmm. the right versions for that specific thing. So that's one way you can do that as well. So what I love about that is all the package managers have APIs that allow you to programmatically invoke installation. So you can actually come up with a manifest file, and then you call all mm -hmm. the package managers APIs to just process through that manifest file. It's pretty cool. So um, my my my, uh, my uh, endeavors uh, regarding the NIPM also um, I, I found out that there's there's a lot of dependencies specifications in there and stuff like that. So it's it's quite powerful there. So um, saying it, saying it again, it's it's I think from what I understood, it's more a, a system level package manager. Uh, but the dependency management on that one is quite strong. So um, I really like that. So um, just uh, some some minutes ago on the chat, there's uh, there, there was Scott answered to um, to Alan that there's uh, currently now there is no rollback for um, for for all the package versions. Did I get that right? Within the GUI, the GUI doesn't support any type of downgrade or that capability. Um, through the CLI, there is a operation that can uh, you can select uh, okay. um, via the command line to say downgrade, but um, it's def definitely not a first class citizen of, of NIPM at this point in time. Yeah, and the, the challenge of, of downgrading is not so much the, the package manager doesn't care. It's happy to move packages back and forward. There's just kind of a the challenge of is there's typically drivers involved moving backwards uh, driver versions. And with this, you know, NI software being kind of like a bunch of Legos organized, a lot of interdependencies, when you move one thing back, um, you may have broken other things. So technically, you might need to move a bunch of other things back to older versions as well. And all of a sudden, you've just changed your whole stack. And so somewhat of the architecture of the drivers and interdependencies is what makes uh, moving backwards from a package mm -hmm. perspective more more of a complicated uh, procedure. So. I think that's in general, to be honest, in packages. I don't think it's, it's, this isn't something specific to NI or anything. It's like a, the package manager chocolatey uses. Also, the fact that you've got to specifically on the command line specify, I want to be downgrading. And often it's not a very good idea because there could be, it, sometimes it will break because going backwards is harder than going forwards. And sometimes you've made fixes to install scripts and other things that actually you needed to go forward. And then if you try and go backward, those unfixed scripts are going to run again and yeah so i think that's in general going backwards is something that is more of a manual process than, than going forwards especially at a system level if you've got a virtual yeah, environment you just wipe it and reinitialize it right? it's, mu it's much better to do an uninstall and then an uh, install of the the yeah. previous version 
Well, and then you can also use virtual machines, right? And yeah. snapshot them at a certain point in time as a tool. That's right. And then there's even even VM environments have APIs into them that can allow moving between different set points and spinning up mm. VM. Ooh, and having been on the other side of the NI fence where I was actually in R&D for a little while, I, I know how hard these folks work to make our lives easy. So we pause, take a second and say thank you for all the work that R&D does, putting themselves in our shoes so that we really can accelerate um, innovation. I, I love that. Thank you for making our lives easier. Well said, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, um, I'm. Uh, I'm a really. I really like to uh, to to work with the uh, with other package managers. From my standpoint, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to get uh, at the company where I'm currently working at at Birkett. Um, I'm trying to to, uh, to to get the best of all of them. But it's it's just like for me now. I'm in the situation like. Um, so what I'm going to use for what? So where are the uh, where are the advantages? I'm right. trying to have uh, to, to use the NIPM for uh, for general lab view uh, installation on all the clients. Trying to automate that. That that is one idea. This is for sure something that this package manager is kind of made for. Yeah, um, even for test and deployments, something like that. Yeah, and on on the other hand side, um, if I go. Um, if I go into R and D, if we're going into the into the development, I'm more like, okay, let's let's, let's use VIP, uh, not uh, yeah, VIPM packages, because um, this there's, there's the, I get I get the QMA to that. I get almost everything with with VIPM, yeah. and I have the prob I don't have the problem that I'm uh, stuck to a certain lab view version. I have the earliest lab view version, and then I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think that you just hit on a couple of different things. Each of the package managers has their own strengths and areas for improvement. And I cannot praise VI package manager enough for how easy it makes my life consuming the code. The palette manipulation, I mean, it, that goes from science into art. That's how good it is. It's easy to make palettes. It's easy to distribute those palettes. And I don't have to worry about the lab view version. So that's a, that's a clear strength. I love that. Okay. NI Package Manager makes it easy for me to get my hands on the entire NI platform lickety split. And I can also build NI packages super quick and package installers. That's great. G Package Manager is open source, so I can extend it in the way that I need. And I've got per project installation. So just take all of that and shove it in one package manager. Let's just do that. <laughs> right? That's part of the reason why I put together that package manager chart. Um, because each of them has strengths and weaknesses. And again, through nobody's fault, it's just an evolution um, through because of business, because of technology, and because of the overall industry and what we've needed. So it's just evolving and rolling with the punches and pressing for what we need. We need a package manager that solves all of these problems. all I have to say about that. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, I, I just will add just from the NI package manager perspective, when um, we were, uh, you know, initially talking about creating this a couple years ago, we had, you know, we recognized that, oh, there's, you know, system package manager and a language package manager. We actually talked to some industry experts and folks like, is there any examples of any package manager out there that has both, that includes both? And at the time, you know, we probably missed some maybe, but we weren't able to find any that handled both. So this seems to be somewhat of a unique, uh, unique problem. I think it's still solvable. But there, there are very few to none examples of one package manager that can do all of these things well. So I think some interesting mm. challenges for us. Uh, yeah, I think well, maybe, maybe very different things. Yeah, like but they are different things. A, so taking on a system package manager, I think, makes a ton of sense for like a compact Rio, right? So it's an NI system. It makes sense for there to be an NI system manager managing all the stuff on there. And certainly, you know, if it's going to be an NI IDE that deploys stuff down there, then it makes a lot of sense 
Um, I think the reason why there probably aren't that many is it's really hard to create package managers. There's a good blog article on Medium that's called like, so you want to create a package manager? <laughs> and it's like a 20 page long article that ends with like, just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, we, we kind of, we, we need them though. So we kind of do it out of necessity, right? Yep. But, but, but solving package management for, for code reuse and projects is a very different problem domain kind of mm -hmm. than, than system, although there's some overlap in what they do. And then like, if you're going to, you're not going to start out creating a system manager and then say, oh, and now we're going to also create a package managers for all these different languages. Mm -hmm. I think they're I all think, so yeah. specific in their needs. They're all specific. And I think that, I think that's the key um, is that, um, I mean, Chris, you were talking about the IPM and how it makes all the palettes really easy and all this sort of thing. And that can only happen because that package manager is developed specifically for LabVIEW. So I think when it comes to those package managers, um, it needs to be targeted at a, a specific language or, or something. And then that sort of narrows the focus to be not so much as a general purpose package manager. But when you're looking at system package managers for, for any software you want to package up, you need something truly general purpose that also can interoperate with other tools and things like that. So they're much different scopes, I think, of problems. And that's probably why you don't see, you see the split and you don't see a tool trying to do it all because it's just too much. Sure. And so I love the idea of individual, I'm all about modularity and Lego blocks all working together. Don't get me wrong, love that with a passion. But right now there's this uh, divide between these two different notions that we then put that burden on the shoulders of the developers and the distributors to cross that divide and all of the joy that comes along. So I feel like this is still a bit of an unsolved problem, which this is why I like the user story as much as I do. As a developer, I wanna be able to set up my environment and start coding as quickly as possible so that I can devote what's in my head to the task at hand. Well, is it a system package or is it a reuse package? In some ways I don't care and in other ways I do. Jim, very much to your point. They, they're, they're important. How can we get these two things to merge together? This is where I think there's room for innovation and some creativity. I think ideally you want package managers that can operate, can talk to each other. You need yep. APIs so the package managers themselves can talk to each other. That would Love be it. perfect. I mean, the, the example from our side is that um, we, we've wrapped up all the NI installers um, into chocolatey packages. So, right. so you, wrap, you wrap them up with PowerShell install scripts <laughs> and they're all packaged up and they all work and it works perfect. But now, now everything's moving to the NI package manager. Now we've got to work out, okay, going forward, how are we going to make that work together? So we need a way for them to, because you need, you need sort of almost like a master package manager. You, you decide on one that's going to do yes. that because, yeah. you know, Again, we're not going to change from chocolatey in our business. It's embedded. We're using it for everything. So, uh, so we need a way to make that be the master and then have the other package manager be able to be called by that and, you know, talk to each other so that it works. And I yeah. think that's the key. It's interoperability between those sort of the system level and the, um, the, the focused yes. language level. Love it. Yeah. So right now the solution could be that you wrap a package in a package, mm. which, yeah. Oh, with all of the blessings and curses that come along with that. And if it was Adam, automatable, it'd be great. Yeah, Adam, I'm curious. So in your implementation for Chocolate, obviously you are wrapping our installers or package, package inside of the package, yeah. but are you actually are, uh, mining out the dependency relationships? And so you're sort of duplicating at the chocolate, chocolate level, or are you sort of ignoring and just letting everything that you're putting in from an eye is all just, it's a sole piece that stands on its own? Um, yeah, it's sort of um, we we try and do it as best we can. So we'll have the runtimes. We'll have we'll split it up into we've got packages for for all the different runtimes. We've got packages for all the developer environments and all this sort of thing. Some of them will have dependencies, but um, mostly we leave the rest of the dependency resolution for the NI side to to the NI installer because we've got no way of knowing exactly what it's going to pull in. So we have to sort of uh, just let it get on with it. And sometimes. The main issue is if you uninstall something, it's probably not going to install everything. Um, there's probably going to be bits left over, but we can sort of live with that. Um, but, but in general, that's that's how we do it. We wrap up the executable installer with the quiet switches and the install specs and everything. So it installs without any user interaction. And then we we just have that as a, a standalone package in our repository that 
is then pulled in by our other packages that will rely on it. The, the main point is to have the NI stuff in there so that we can use it as dependencies. Uh, so, yeah. Got it. Cool, thanks. So on, on the chat, we had this discussion. Um, it was started um, basically, basically I think, by, by Q, and then uh, Jörg just made a proposal. So uh, what Q wrote, here's one scenario. I have an IDE add-on. It is tooling for the use with our HAL that is distributed as PP else using the NIPM. How would this be now? OK, now the chat just jumped. <laughs> OK. Um, it would be best to use the VIPM due to symbolic paths, but everything else would be distributed through system link and NIPM. What should I do? So, yeah, so basically here we have have a scenario where we could use both of them or they should interact like that. Yeah. So, um, and w one of those takes was, um, how, um, how much would GPM or VIPM or whatever benefit from LabVIEW providing a more symbolic path like 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 project, so to to get that integrated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the things that we need to chat with NI about in terms of future mm -hmm. versions of LabVIEW is the ability to set symbolic paths. Um, I think I think there's a bit of work also to do in terms of you know just the built-in VI lib and how those components. Uh, actually get installed like the standard library. Yeah, I, I would imagine too that uh, over the next kind of 10 years, the idea of being able to create like a little lab and virtual environment will become uh, more possible. Jorg, I love what you just said. <laughs> Where's the donate <laughs> button for that? <laughs> you say you want symbolic path support. You're talking about just from an installation perspective? Or are you talking about more from a development project perspective? No, the, the IDE perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Got the same it. way I can link to VI lib or user lib, I'd love to be able to link to project lib. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it's purely development. Okay. Not installation right, right now. Okay. And that, uh, that's that's surely a linker uh, addition, which is great. That's just how Lab you finds its VIs. And I believe that the way that G Package Manager, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, G Package Manager solved that problem was through cross linking. So in effect, you put the, yeah, it's just a cross-linking right now. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I'm so excited for Project Dragon. I'm, I'm very curious to see what that experience is like. So Jim, release it. <laughs> release the dragon. <laughs> release the dragon. <laughs> I, uh, friends, friends and family have been calling it Project Dragon. <laughs> oh, I like that. So that's the crowd on the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Well, so I, I just want to say too, in, in that spirit, I was kind of thinking about all the things kind of going on uh, in, in my world. And I know everybody here has just been, you know, it's it working so hard to get us back to this point where we can all meet again and be working on projects. And uh, we just had a conference out in Boulder, in person, small. And so uh, I think I think and I and everybody has been working really hard to get us here, and we've got some good work to do moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um... Yeah, and having said that, there uh, has been a post by Christian. He says uh, he, he absolutely likes the NRPM's com command line, mm -hmm. which is cool to use, especially uh, doing uh, being in the CI CD. Um, finding some information with a configured system the first time is a bit tricky. Yeah, I can. Uh, so um, this is something um, I have al al also found out. So. Um, one of my wish list of the feature list uh, I'd like to see with the VI, uh, with the NIPM, speaking of my perspective, would be uh, uh, I have a lot of C uh, possibilities on the CLI, but I ha have not found a really conclusive uh, documentation for that. Just you know, Christmas is coming, so I thought I might be able to 
have some wishes on that because I absolutely like that one. So, um, yeah. Oh, are you talking about slash question or? mark? Yeah, because so really the, the yeah the yeah yeah uh, you're right slash question mark. But then uh, which which type of uh, yeah the slash qu slash question mark works? Um, I get some more information, but I found myself like. Um, which package is meant? So, what's the name of the package? Is that the long package name? Is this the feed oh. name or something like that? So it's more more into the details. So that's um, that's yeah. where I got stuck from from time to time. Yeah, and I've yep. yeah, mm. I, I've been there as well. So sometimes the API requires the package name, and you don't know if it's the pretty print name or the long uniquified name, or if it's the full name with the version of Lab. It's there, there's a little bit of um, I, I call it API confusion, but yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm I'm also aware that the package builder is just um, it's just a, it's a a nice GUI for that. Um, but I found myself uh, working with the package builder and then going back to the package manager CLI because I was just f missing features in the package builder. So um, I think if the package builder would have some more uh, or get some kind of feature equality to the to the CLI. Um, this would, would also uh, enhance adoption of the NRPM because it just, you know, we, we're graphical people here. That's why we draw pictures. You know, my, my, my wife's also programming. She always says, you're not programming, you're drawing pictures. And, um, and so, um, yeah, I can use the CLI, but um, I would really love to be able to configure more than mm -hmm. just to type. So that's my take on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say having a, um, a well-documented and, and comprehensive CLI interface is, is uh, essential for the CI and CD tools. So you need you need that functionality to make it work with CI and CD. But, you know, one of the big selling points of why we went with Chocolatey was that um, it integrates really well with those sort of tools. It integrates natively with um, a CD tool called Puppet, uh, which we can use to manage our test stations with. Um, so I can just give it the configuration of install these packages at these versions and and it will just work because someone's already because it's sort of a more standardized tool and CLI interface someone's already written the module to make that work so um, uh, I think yeah the, the, the CLI stuff um, uh, I mean I, I come from a background where I also do uh, Linux development and other things so I'm more familiar with the CLI as well but um, uh, I find it's it's quite essential if, if you want a tool to be picked up by um, also big other projects like these big CI CD tools they they come from a more CLI in, um, into yeah, influence background so in order for to generate interest there and get them integrated into these sort of tools I think it's essential to get the sort of command line bit right as well otherwise um, a lot of people will just skip over it yep yeah, I suspect that's one of the qualities of any package manager that's going to be highly adopted. Clear API, mm. high degree of automation for a variety yeah. of different reasons. Love it. Okay, so. I'm, and I'm, I'm always excited where the LabVIEW community is going and I continue to have a tremendous amount of hope that our community will um, go from kind of this to this in terms of numbers. And I really feel like package management is one of the one of the keys. There are multiple keys here, but I think that's just one. Community addition, that's huge. That's huge. So I think that was super helpful. But I think the package management one of them. As I've worked across numerous companies, I found that the means of distributing code is one of the, if not the foremost problem that internal companies face. So I think the package management helps out there. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what I also see is that the the um, NI community is more and more moving from, let's say, um, engineers coming from the drawing board and kind of putting pictures together and wiring them together more to the to the software engineering approach, where this this package management gets more and more crucial. Especially if we're we're not talking about monolithic uh, applications anymore, not not about it. Yeah, okay, so modular 
application can be spaghetti as well. But anyway, we just just uh, we have smaller spaghetti portions. So um, yeah, and I think that's that that that's also a, a crucial thing that that's happening here. And we should we're getting more and more professional. Just think back, uh, Chris. When were, when did we meet? When was the, your last year in in, uh, in at an I? There was. Oh, I think it was 2015. Is that my 2015. Last that's when, when when we had the European CLA summit. Yeah, that's right. And that's when uh, when when I think that's when I had a short presentation about doing um, doing continuous integration back then with some tools from uh, from, from Jing, and what, where we've got where we've got. So uh, we're also using Docker in the meantime. So we're getting more and more professional. And so um, I think. Oh, 2015 was Rome. Yeah, I, I met you at the bus stop there, yeah. but I met I, I met you again somewhere in Berlin. In Berlin. We got lost in Berlin somewhere. <laughs> I remember that. Um, <laughs> okay, I won't tell anymore. Um, <laughs> it was not Vegas, but it was Berlin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that the whole community is moving on, and I think uh, this is, is, is um, yeah. Big achievement, and um, we, we, uh, we're finally getting there. And if we if we keep uh, talking to each other, learning from each other, and all those tools, learning from each other, um, we might at least not have uh, one tool that does it all, one to rule them all. Because you know what happens with one to rule them all? They usually land in the volcano. Uh, okay. But, but uh, maybe um, maybe we have two that talk to each other. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the with the interface, so everybody, so so every tool have their. Sorry, if I'm talking about two, but uh, let's say have multiple ones that that at least, uh, um, yeah, adding functionality to each other, for sure. Man, so I love that we having these individual tools that can talk well with each other. That'll keep the number of package managers down to a bare minimum, and. As our individual use cases arise, it would sure be great if I could somehow extend uh, what was inside the package manager so that it was more open. I think that that is how you cut down um, new package managers coming into existence. The package managers that exist, interoperability, and ideally extensible, if at all possible. So, okay. So, I think that was a Really good conclusion for this event. So it's um, it's almost seven o'clock. So then the next um, the next session will start uh, soonish. Um, so <laughs> release the dragon. <laughs> yeah, release the dragon. There we go again. Uh, yeah, the Hobbit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Eric was already complaining. There's not a lot of the rings here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Having set up, I'd like to uh, wrap up right now. There come the flames. Um, I'd like to wrap up right now saying um, thank you very much for all of you contributing to this panel discussion. I hope it has been um, as interesting for you as it has been for me and as it has been for the uh, attendees, for all of the participants of this talk. Um, there we go. Yeah, so there, there's the dragon. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much for being here. Um, thanks everybody for listening, for uh, sending in the questions on the on the chat. Um, let's speak to each other somewhere during the session and hopefully very soon uh, in real life again. So stay safe, everyone. Yeah. Great Bye. to talk to you all. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you yeah. all for listening. Thank you.